Well, in life, there's two ways to make money. You work for someone else, which most people will do, or you work for yourself. You're an entrepreneur and you have your own business. Uh, having your own business is very risky. Now, most people do better off, including myself. I've had a couple businesses and I've worked for private companies and, and public companies, but you're, I've made more money working for companies than I have working for myself. So if having your own business is riskier, uh, and in most cases, on average, you'll get paid less than if you worked for someone else and you built your career, why do many people, even including myself to a certain extent, want to be an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is someone who has an extra level of freedom in life. However, just like I always discuss on this channel, there's always trade-offs. That freedom of earning your own money or creating your own money through having your own business comes with a huge responsibility. And sometimes you can work more hours than the average person working the average job. So you have to take all those things into consideration when you're thinking about being an entrepreneur. For most people, including myself, you're better off uh, working a job, getting in a trade or a great industry such as healthcare, IT, uh, a trade, uh, something where you can get some certifications, get some work experience, and then build your way up over time. And then on the side, on the side, do your creative uh, or your aspirational business as best you can. That way, if it doesn't work out, because again, most businesses fail or don't make enough money to be considered a business, they're just a hobby, you are not destitute. Because out of anything in life, whatever you do, you do not want to be destitute, meaning that you don't have enough money for basic essentials. Uh, and you know, you're know, going to have to borrow money from friends, family, and you're always going to be controlled by other people. So financial freedom is living below your means, but to live below your means, you have to have an income. So I just kind of broke down how you're going to get an income and the pros and cons of an entrepreneur and working from people and my experience and my future goals, because I still have goals um, uh, to be financially free, to be able to, you know, not just retire early and, and live on the beach, because when I'm not working now, I am by the beach. And I consciously made that decision. I paid the price and I sacrificed for it. However, the ability to be able to generate revenue on your own is a great feeling and it's it's a goal you should have goals in life and there's nothing wrong with going after them responsibly so this this live feed uh dedicated to how to make fifty thousand dollars per year is going to be in the vein of entrepreneurship creating your own revenue through a side business side hustle whatever you want to call it okay because making fifty thousand dollars through working for someone else, there's a different avenue, which I'll discuss just briefly, but $50,000 in the United States of America is the average salary for the average person. You take that in consideration that obviously if you're in New York City, $50,000 doesn't go as far as Oklahoma. If you're in Oklahoma, $50,000, you're living great, et cetera, et cetera. However, it's all based on the cost of living and where you want to live. So, before we get into the science of how to make $50,000, and that's not easy, okay? I want to say that because I, I am not able at this point to generate $50,000 on my own. I have to work for other people. So this is a goal of mine. I'm not giving, this isn't some seminar that you go to a hotel and someone sells you on, this is how you become a millionaire, buy this product. I don't know. This is me sharing my thoughts and my life experience. And so we're going to break down the science, because life is divided into two main parts. Science, what is science? Science is collecting data, studying that data, and then forming a conclusion. What is art? Art is based on interpretation, okay? Meaning that you look at a painting, one person thinks it's uh, priceless, the other person thinks it's a piece of dookie. Uh, it's, it's worthless. So life is both science and art. You should tend to start on the side of science, knowing the data. Uh, and then deciding how much risk or how much calculated uh, chance you want to take. So that's what we're going to start on. Shout out to everyone on live checking, man. I got love for you guys. We're going to get to all live comments, guys. Hang in there. You can leave them now. I just want to get my thoughts off. So first, to make 50000 let's break down the science, the math, the data. 
So you say, okay, let's take $50,000, 50,000, that number, and divide it by 365. Why? Because there's 365 days in a year. Well, right there, that's not the proper formula. Why? Because you do not want to work 365 days of the year. You want to have days off the weekends and you're going to have to account for holidays. Even if you're willing to work them, society will be off certain days and business won't be as lucrative. So the true first calculation is to take 50,000 and divide it by 250. Because after you do the math and an account for weekends and holidays, there is approximately 250 working days in the United States of America, okay? So now you take 50,000 and you divide it by 250. What do you get? Someone please Google it, okay? And put it in the live chat. I did it. So if you take 50,000 and you divide it by 250, which is how many working days in a year, you get 200. So therefore, if you worked, a, if you had a business Monday through Friday for the normal days in the calendar that are business days, you would need to make $200 per business day to make $50,000 per year. And we'll say pre-tax. I'm not going to say we're going to, we're not going to say pre-expense. Okay. Because if like emoji meme, you lived in Albany and you had a, a basically like a day spot. If you had $200 in sales per day, but your materials that you use, uh, whether it's like lotions or oils, if that, if $200 in sales minus your materials that you use for the job, if you use $100 worth of materials, you really only made $100 that day pre-tax. So if you only made $100 per day, then what do you make per year? Then you make half of 50, which is $25,000 per year, Okay, which is very low income. What is poverty in America? $12,000 per year or less. So if you were making $25,000 per year, that's great because that's not easy. Okay. However, you're still low income. The medium income is $50,000. Above 75,000 is, you know, again, upper class. So if you say, I want to make 100K a year. Okay, great. Then you need to make $400 per day pre-tax, but not pre-expense. So you can do the math however you want. And that's a good start. Every entrepreneur, even if you're not into the uh, financial aspect, you have to know basic financial. Why? Because if you're not looking after your money or if you're not putting clear objectives to your goal, what are you doing? You're shooting by the hip. You are like a loving, overweight person cooking a cake. You have a heart of gold. You're going to go to heaven, but you're also going to give everyone in your house diabetes because you're not measuring the sugar. Everything in life needs to be measured to a certain degree or else it's an unhealthy objective. Okay? So what I could tell you is this. Now that you know to make 50K, you need to make $200 a day pre, uh, after your, uh, expenses to make that. So now you have to look at that realistically. Do you clean houses? You don't need a college degree to clean houses, right? How many houses would you have to clean and how long does it take you to clean the average house? Maybe you can clean three houses in an eight hour day and charge a hundred dollars per house. You know, like it's all going to depend on the square footage, etc. But you know, if you could clean three houses per day and make $300, you're probably going to spend you know, $100 or so in materials. So, but then you would come close to possibly making $200 per day per working day. Now, it's not easy to make that every day for five days a week for 250 days out of the working calendar. So, you know, you may be able to make that a couple. That's the problem with owning a business. And that's what I learned is when it's hot, it's hot. And when it's cold, it's cold. So you have to recognize that you know, it comes in waves. Okay. And so owning your business, it's hard to rely on that money. And that's why many times you're better off doing it as a side hustle because the benefit is when you work for someone else, you have, you can create a budget because you know how much you're going to get in your paycheck. You know how many hours you're going to work and you have benefits paid for. That's also a big thing they have to consider. If you're going to be an entrepreneur is, are you going to pay for your own health insurance? And are you going to save for your own retirement plan? So all those factors play a part, right? But again, what are we doing? We're brainstorming. We're, we're putting goals to specific measurements, and then we're going to put a little artsiness on it. 
Why? Because we are people, I'm a person that aspires to live my best life, aspires to be financially free, but I'm not just going to masturbate to, I'm not just going to speak to the trolls who have no life. I am, I am disciplined of the mind. I don't have a weak, nasty mind, a aimless mind. I am focused by the grace of God and through hard work. I can clearly look past the negative, focus on clear objectives and say, you know what? Let's do this. And so now we have a goal of $200 per day after expenses. We need to make that. Okay. Now, and we have to average that through the, there's going to be good and bad times. And then we also have to count on do every day, do we have to be healthy enough to show up because we don't have sick days now, right? If you are an entrepreneur and you don't have someone else working for you. Now, what happens when you're sick and you can't make 200, you don't have sick days, you know, and you have to, you have to also pay into your own disability, right? So if you're an entrepreneur, uh, whether you're cleaning houses, uh, owning a day spa or trading stocks, you need to pay in for your own health care, your own disability, because, you know, let's say you get an accident and you can't clean houses, you can't trade stocks, you can't go to a day spa. You have to have income coming in when you're hurt. So when you're an entrepreneur, you have to pay for your health care, and that includes disability insurance, that includes retirement savings. Be wise in your planting. There's a scripture that says, don't build a house and not count the cost. Why? Because you will end up looking foolish. It's hard to make $50,000 per year, especially as an entrepreneur. Okay, That's why most people won't do it. And I haven't been able to achieve that yet. I'm striving to do it. And this is my, my mindset when I try to do it. But again, I, I cannot do that full time or else I would be destitute. Full time, again, you're, you're better off going in a good career uh, industry, getting certifications and getting work experience, not just certifications, work experience. A lot of people love to get degrees and you need some, but they are refuse to work consistently and show up consistently because it sucks, but there's no way around it. As you get into your forties and fifties, if you didn't put off the work of your life in your twenties and thirties, it gets easier. If you live below your means and if you keep working, that's the good news. However, if you keep putting it off, you're going to be destitute in your old age. You're going to be not employable and you're not going to have the energy to own your own business to have, you know, and it's it's tough to, to have passive income and have stuff coming in. It's very tough. God, it's not easy. We're doing the math. Now we're doing the science, but anyone who's lived any type of life knows there's a difference between, okay, it looks good on paper and then actually being able to execute just like most people say, okay, I only want to eat 2000 calories per day. Okay. Huh. Good luck with that. Okay. How do I know? Cause guys, I've been obese. I've been anorexic and I try to balance it right now. And you have to, re- it takes a long time to be able to be average around, you know, 2000 calories per day, because at night comes, you did great all day at night comes and all of a sudden you get hungry and now you go in the kitchen and what you eat in private shows in public. Okay. And it's not easy. You can work out like a madman or a mad woman, but your diet is 80% of your health and well-being. That's emotion. Like physically, your body doesn't need food after 2,000 calories per day, but emotionally, psychologically, you want it. So you have to be realistic. Whether it's with YouTube, day spa, cleaning a house, day trading. Guys, again, even YouTube now, I've built my channel up 10,000 followers, 3,000, 3 million views. I'm still getting paid less than minimum wage. Okay. So it's great. I'm thankful for that. However, what I want to tell you guys is don't be disillusioned. Okay, that you're going to make $50,000 a year doing YouTube. The average person will never. Okay. However, it's a good goal, but understand its place and priority in your life. It's a side hustle. Same thing with Uber DoorDash, right? Like to make $50,000 a year, you would not, you would have to do more than $200 a day, right? Because you have to figure out for gas and expenses. You would have to basically make $400 or $350 per day. I've done DoorDash. And what I tell you, that's almost impossible. And I know a lot of people that work DoorDash seven days a week all year round. And what they don't realize is those things, they're good for now, but they won't be around down the road and you're going to burn yourself out. They're good, but I want to prepare you. I want to prepare you and I want to prepare myself. I practice what I preach. I practice what I preach. So let us have a goal 
And again, we adjust the goals for our individual circumstance. You may say, Sam, I don't need $50,000 a year to live comfortable. Great. There's nothing wrong with that. Then I think at least you need 25,000. How do I figure that? Because $12,000 a year is poverty. Okay. Do I know people living in poverty on under $1,000 a year? Yes. And I see how they live. You can do it, but I see how they live. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to live. And it's no disrespect to them. However, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, you know, and I don't want you to lie to yourself and I don't want you to live below your potential. Okay. I will never judge anyone for earning an income, whether they make $2 an hour or $200 an hour. Okay. Because again, I practice what I preach. I've worked for minimum wage. I work for more. Okay. And I respect anyone going out there and going after what they want because there's always trolls in life, whether on YouTube or at your job. Most people quit their job because of a troll. Guess what guys keep showing up. You'll never see 50K until you can show up in the eye of the troll, whether on YouTube or in real life, and you can be calm, you can be assertive, and you can keep showing up and they will drop out of the workforce. They'll drop out of YouTube. Their accounts will get disabled because they've been flagged as a bully. Oh, oh yeah. So again, if you at least need 25K, that's ach achievable. Because that's $100 per day. You could clean a house. I did construction. You can hang a ceiling fan. You could DoorDash or Uber and make two, $100 a day. You know, if you did about $150 worth of rides, I think after deductions, you'd be about $100 per day. That's $25,000 per year. That's not bad. For a single person with no kids, that's a decent life. Okay. Not a great life. That's a decent life. That'll give you some freedom. Why do I talk about money? Not to masturbate to money. Okay. Not to uh, idolize it but to be financially free. So you don't have to be on the hook to relatives, to government programs. If you need those things, go after them. But however, go after your independence because there's nothing better in life than being free of the manipulation of others. Because there's some people in life that don't want you to have financial freedom or, or emotional freedom because they're controllers, they're manipulators, and they want you to be on the hook to them because no one wants to be around them and so they use their money as power over you. A bully is this. A bully waits till someone is weak and then it, they manipulate them because then they know they got, where, where can you go? You can't go anywhere else. You need me. Huh. Guys, it's a disgrace. It's a shame. That, that's how people are though, guys. So let's go forward. Let's go forward. Hey guys, you aim for the moon even if you miss your amongst the stars. So we have some data. $200 per day working Monday through Friday for yourself or from, from side hustle will get you 50K a year pre-tax. That's a good goal. It's a good goal. If you make 25, you aim for the moon, even if you miss you amongst the stars. If you can make 25K a, a, a year on your own without being employed, like for like working for, that's a, that's a blessing. You know, that's a blessing. However, account for this, account for your time. Never not account for your time. Because if you're working 15 hours a day, whether it's two hours or you on YouTube or, or waiting in a parking lot two hours for Uber, you have to account for your time, okay? Because money is meant so that you can have it as a resource to enjoy your time. You have to balance it. One of the keys to life is balance. Now, you don't want to just be vegging out. I see some great people I know on YouTube. I'm watching their channel and they're vegging out in their car. And they're not, they're not fulfilled. You could see it in their soul. So you have to put a level of demand on your body. I've often said, like, if you park a car or an RV and you never drive it, it deteriorates faster. You have to put demand on your life. When you go into the gym, you, you actually are, are hurting yourself. You're, you're tearing muscles. However, when you rest and you balance it with rest, your muscles grow bigger. So you have to balance between relaxing, resting, enjoying the fruits of your labor and working balance. But there is a great joy in working and doing what you love. Okay. It is. And that takes time and that takes specific measure measuring of the goals. Okay. Just like when you make a cake, you have to measure the amount of sugar. Okay. Why? Because you want to be healthy and you want to have a target. Okay. And anyone that doesn't respect that, you don't need them in your life. You don't need them in your life. Why? Because they, they, Get upset that you're measuring the sugar, that you're measuring the goal. Why? Because they're not. 
And so anytime you grow in life or you go after something, you are intimidating to the person that's not. At least that's a controlling person. If someone loves you, but they just don't have it in you, they'll encourage you. They'll be a cheerleader. When someone isn't in a cheerleader, they're a troll. They say negative, subliminal, sarcastic, hurtful things to destroy what? Your confidence. Every troll in life has one goal, to destroy your confidence. Why? Because as soon as your confidence is crushed, you will come begging at the altar of the troll, which is a life that is below your potential, that is hiding under a rock, and that is scared to step out into the light and be judged and possibly fail. You need your confidence. You need, hum you need humility, but you need confidence. Okay. And so what I've just shared with you is a mindset, is some science, some actual data, is some ways to do it without being a, a, a you know, multi-degreed scholar. However, like I said, there's a lot of risk and failure involved in entrepreneurship. So build a level of a career in an industry that may be good. Okay. And as you get older, if you're consistent, if you show up, your life will get financially better. If you live below your means, you can keep showing up. So it does get better. However, if you don't, it, it gets worse, okay. real worse. Because that's what a lot of younger and middle-aged people don't realize. As you get older, you're less employable. Okay. And you have to be mindful of that. Okay. And we all only have a limited amount of time. Okay. So again, you know, it's like money's a resource. It's not the end all be all. Your time and your health have to be balanced with how much money you're expending. However, if you have all this time and all this health and you're not making money, money matters. Because what are you going to do? Sit in your car and masturbate? Guys, come on. I mean, I do that, but I don't do that all day. You know what I'm saying? So if you guys appreciate this, I appreciate it. Click that thumbs up button. Share the video. Subscribe if you're not. I'll take a hydration break. And then we're going to go into all live comments. Okay? Love and respect, guys. We stay positive, man. And never forget, a spiteful person always exposes themselves. When you put up a boundary, a spiteful person always exposes their soul when you put up a boundary and they can't respect it. Never forget it. <sighs> Praise the Lord. I feel good tonight, guys. I feel good. I'm in South Florida. It was 80 degrees sunny. Beautiful day. Is there a difference between sun and the clouds? Yes. And that's why I respect Texas, but it's very cloudy in the winter. I need sun, man. I need a lot of sun. All right, let's go top of live comments, guys. Russell, what's up, brother? Good to see you. I appreciate you coming in here. I appreciate that live uh, comment. Thank you, brother. George, what's up, man? What would you recommend for someone with a bachelor's degree in business but no job? Uh, get a job doing anything, okay? Uh, so you should you should never be idle. So whatever type of job you can get, uh, even if that's the lowest level of Walmart, get it and show up and apply for other jobs. Because the more you're unemployed, the more... Uh, the more you're out of the workforce, the less confidence you have, the less momentum you have, the less contacts you have, and the worse you look to a potential employer. So it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I would look at someone, with, there's so much job opportunity, whether it's to Uber, DoorDash, work at Planet Fitness, again, if you got nothing else going on, and then you keep applying to other jobs and you're persistent in following up. However, if you're just sitting there after getting a degree saying like there's no jobs, and right now, look, unemployment's at an all-time low, I recognize that the middle class is still shrinking. But you can get a job doing something until you get something better. So if you're not, the question is more in your mindset rather than the actual evidence of getting something. So look, there's no you're not going to start all the time by making fifty thousand dollars a year or making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You're going to start probably making around twenty five, okay? And then if you show up every day for a couple years, then you gradually build your way up, okay? And then you leverage that experience. But if you're not going to start and you're going to just wait for this dream job you're going to end up destitute. Uh, that's the reality of life. So good question. Free to be me. Get that money, Sam. Hey guys, look, money is obtained by two reasons, uh, two ways. One is you have to show up. Two is you have to start immediately and then refine it and build up as you go. Okay. I started to work as soon. I remember at 16 filling out applications at Burger King, McDonald's, and some places in New Jersey at that time, they said, well, we can't hire you till you're 17. Why did I want to work? Not because I wanted to flip burgers, because I wanted money. Why did I want money? Because I wanted financial independence. I wanted to be free of other people. Okay. So my first job was in a mall at a CD store. Okay. Was I thankful for that? Yeah. You know, 
Uh, so what I can tell you is this, guys. Look, start now and refine it as you go. Blam. Moving to Clemson, South Carolina. Okay. In seven days while I'm praying for you, brother, like I told you since the beginning when I saw your video on how you expressed yourself, that you said you're a fair person. And what I can tell you is you're going after what you want. You're a college student. You've worked while you're in college. You delivered Pepsi, so you have what it takes. Nervous but excited. That's part of anything in life. Keep showing up. Been working in the winter. That's why I respect your hustle. The last couple days, and let me tell you, it's not good. I know it's not good, but you showed up. So now your life's going to get progressively better because when you can show up and when it's not good, think about when you're in South Carolina and it's better and you got better job opportunities and you're going forward in life. Blanton, in 10, 15 years, you'll be a manager making major money because guess what? You weren't one of these people that were in college saying, I can't get a job. You worked while you were in college. And then you're working directly after you got out of college. Why? Because you're a positive person. Okay. And that's what it takes. Good job. Cameron, step one, <laughs> become an escort. I love you, Cameron. I know you're just bust, you're busting my chops. I know that. I love you. I love you too, Cameron. I love you, man. <laughs> Free to be me. Without minimalism, $50,000 ain't much. With, yo, without minimalism, $100,000 a year isn't much. I know people making $125,000 a year and they got two houses, two boats, and it's not easy. And I understand it. You get easily get caught in that rat race of life. So everything in life is going to require a level of discipline. Okay. And so, and a level of intention and being conscious and not giving into the peer pressure of others. And you know, why is the simple life so hard guys? You, you, you can watch YouTube. Most people do uh, rent van renovations every two months. They get a new rig every year. Why? Because they can't sit still. They can't discipline themselves. I understand it's itchy. That's why when I look at something, I play it out a lot in my head because I've been there. If you keep upgrading your vehicle, if you keep doing renovations, even in a simple life, you end up in this rat race of constant van build outs of constant vehicle upgrades. And then before you know it, you got 5,000 Watts of solar, you know, you got like this double, uh, you know what I mean? Fold down Murphy bed. You know, you got all this extravagant nomad life. And in two years, you're going to trade it in to get a house. Why? Because you're burnt out on the road. However, you just didn't discipline the mind and you didn't enjoy the simple life. Good job. Emoji meme. Shout out to Albany. Shout out to you, my fellow entrepreneur. And she did the math for me. 50,000 divided by 250 working days per year is $200 per day. Lila, a.k.a. Zach. Hey, no man. Hello to you. I'm praying for your family. On the ask you something, we're going down to South Florida. I read your comment earlier and I'm praying for your family. He's off chemo for three days and help him year 2020 stay down in six days for more doctor appointments. Well, I know that sucks. And my heart goes out. I was talking to someone today. And there was a mutual family member that we knew that uh, they got a serious issue going on and the spouse is being a caretaker and they're burnt out. So if you're a caretaker long enough, you will break. Emotionally, you'll break. And there's times where you need to ask and you need to get assistance and put someone in a home. Why? Because you cannot be a nurse 24-7 and take care of yourself and take care of a house and not. That's why there are nurses, doctors, etc. cetera, and homes. Why? Because if you try to be a full-time caretaker and take care of your own life, you're going to end up being a resentful caretaker, wishing that person would die, and you're, they're not going to get adequate care, and you're, you're going to feel guilty when they die. I know. I've, I've seen it. I've lived it. So what I could tell you is it's a difference between you taking care of someone 24 hours a day and them being in a 24-hour-a-day facility, and there's three shifts of workers. And when those workers come into that uh senior home or a disability home, when they come into the home, they're on their job. They're getting paid. They're not resentful because that's their job. I mean, look, they may not be good. They may not, they may be great. They may not, you're always going to get good and bad, but there's a difference between when you go take care of someone, you're there for eight hours and you check out. When you're taking care of someone 24, seven, 365, you never have a day off. You're not getting paid. You're getting exhausted. It's not a healthy situation. Make a mental note to all my caretakers out there, guys. That's why I tell you never date a nurse because a nurse gets burnt out taking care of other people. And then basically she looks at you like she's got to take care of you. And you look at her, well, I don't want to take care of you either. Okay. And then what happens? Divorce. And then what happens? Breakup. And then what happens? Guys, total disaster. Okay. So stay single. If you get in a position, get help to be a caretaker. Gail, $50,000 a year as a nomad is great. It's great, but it's very hard to achieve. So Dream big, but start small because you can't make $1 a day if you don't show up. Okay.
Everyone out there, remember that. You can't make $1 per year if you don't show up. So showing up is always step number one. Good job. Good to see you, Gil. Free to be me, hit that like. Yes, I appreciate if you guys click that thumbs up button. Camera, please hit the upvote. All right with that. Uh, good to see you, Journey Shot to Tennessee. Lila, $60,000 a year equals $200 per day in year. Well, I love you, but the math is wrong because you're doing it maybe divided by 365. You want to only divide by the amount of working days minus weekends and minus holidays. Why? Because if you're working 365, 365 days a year all day long, what you're basically doing is being a caretaker 24-7, 365. You're burning yourself out, and then you're taking your uncle to South Florida to get chemo because you're burnt out. You're saying everything's a disaster. So divide it. Divide 50000 by 250 and you got to have time off. Good job. I love you. Cameron, $12,000 for deer equals UBI. Well, guys, UBI is still poverty. So, and most people will not, it's an opt-in. Most people would not want to opt in a UBI. Why? Because they're already getting paid $800 disability and they got Medicare and they got subsidized housing. So if you accept UBI, you're going to lose your Medicare. You're going to lose your uh, subsidized housing. And now you're going to really be destitute because now you got $1,000 per month and you got no health insurance. You got no housing and you know what you're not going to do. You're not going to opt in. So guys, UBI at $1,000 per month, if you get no other subsidies, is a bad deal for most people. So most people are ready, ready to have a better deal than UBI. However, like I always tell you guys, if you don't work, your life don't work. So $12,000 a year, whether it's UBI or whether it's a disability and some subsidies, it's still poverty. And if you don't believe me, you haven't had people in your life that are living that life and you haven't experienced what poverty is. And poverty sucks, okay? If you have no other choice, you have no other choice. There's no shame because there are some people that have no other choice. But if you have a choice and you don't do anything about it, no one can help you, including me. What do you mean? My goal for 2020 is 250000 a year gross, no sick days. Moji meme, I love you all my heart. You're not just aiming for the moon, you're aiming for Mars. You're like basically uh, SpaceX. You're like uh, Elon Musk. I think you're taking a big bite of the cake and you're going to end up with diabetes. That's too much. Dream big, but start small. Because guys, 250K a year, you're in almost 1% of society. That's not easy, man. So take it easy, Emoji meme. Get down to Orlando. Get the hell out of Albany. Okay, before you start dreaming about making 250K, just get the hell out of Albany, okay? Make $25,000 a year in Orlando. If you can get to 50K a year in Orlando and move to a suburb, you're doing okay. Now, it's still too far away from the ocean for my liking, but everyone's different. I love you, Emoji meme. Tony, Sammy, what's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Shout out to Maryland. I had two Maryland crab cakes today, but they were a little nasty. I won't eat them again. Too nasty. Uh, I don't know if it was the way they made them or what, but I won't do that again. And he goes, Sam A, glad I caught the stream. I'm glad to have you, brother. Just got back from practice. Well, Tony, you keep playing that saxophone. Love, peace, and grace to you. And I appreciate you. So Tony's a saxophone player. So it, it, that's not easy to average uh, $200 per day as a saxophone player or an artist because usually you're only going to get gigs on the weekends when people are at the bars and the clubs. So you would have to make like, you know, $700 per gig on the weekend for it to get to 50K. That's not easy. So that's why there's a saying that says a starving artist. The artistic world is, is hard to make a living off your art uh, because there's just not a big market for it. You know, people want entertainment, but it's, it's uh, high competition, not a lot of positions to make good pay. But keep always do your creative venture on the side because that's what keeps you alive. That's what keeps me alive. And you got to do that. Cameron, thanks, Sam. You know I love you, brother. And I appreciate your consistency and you've shown that you're a positive person. I like to I like you, brother. I appreciate you. Lila, $3,000 a year equals 60000 per year of or the average. Well, damn, you're like the psychopath that like is like, you know, like they're like they're the Rain Man. Like total psychopath, but then like you short them 50 cents and they turn to Rain Man. So I said, oh, shit. Have you ever dealt with that? I've dealt with some people like that. They're on disability. Like they can't get a job. They can't, they can't even park. Like if the handicapped spot ain't close to the uh, thing, even though they get out of the car and they can totally walk. So they got a handicap sticker. They're on disability. And like, you know, they say like they can't function. But if you short them 50 cents, they turn to like Rain Man. Like they're doing all these math. And they're like, damn, man, I thought you were disabled, man. You should be an accountant. Uh, however, however, let's stay positive. Uh, let me just eliminate someone from my life because I love to do it. It's, it's a blesses my heart. Uh, 
I love you, uh, Zach. Uh, Cameron, two one one seven zero. I love you, Cameron four five six. Cameron four fifty. Archie. I was offered a position, but it's six days a week, eight to five. Well, if you have no other position, take it and then get a better job once you have a job. Because the best time to get a job is when you have a job. So if you have no job, it's a no-brainer. Take it. Unless you got a bunch of savings and you're willing to wait. Uh, that's my opinion. That's what I actually do. But you should do whatever you want. Archie, sounds like it might be overwhelming amount of work, 50 hours. Well, if you're working no hours, it's, it's a better deal than not getting a paycheck, in my opinion. So I would take it work it because I've worked way more than that. I mean, I work more than now work 40 hours. I do more than that on, uh, on YouTube. And then, you know, when I did DoorDash, but in my, the beginning of my career, I would work 70, you know, 70 hours, you know, and as an electrician, as a maintenance guy. So guys, if you got nothing else, take it and then get a better job down the road. Cause you'll be more employable. Uh, that's my opinion, but do whatever you want. Come on. How to get an IT job. Well, start, you know, start working, you know, uh, like, like I say, one is, for me, I started as an electrician, okay? I started as an apprentice, though, okay? Making uh, $12 an hour carrying tools. So how would you get an IT job? Start, like, at a basic entry level. Like, you're going to be a security guard at an IT building, okay? okay? Start there, okay? So once you're, and I know, I, I actually helped get a guy who was a security guard in our building in New Jersey into, a, a, like, a higher level IT job. So if you're a security guard at an IT building, a data center or whatever, and you show up every day and you're on top of it, okay, you will have an opportunity when someone drops out of the workforce, they go on disability or they get fired or they get laid off, you can apply for that job because now you've built up a reputation and you can get your way in. So the answer is start, just get your foot in the door, whether it's a security guard in the IT building, you know, if you want to get into healthcare, how do you do it? Be a security guard at, at an um, hospital, okay? And if you show up every day and you're positive, okay, uh, you'll meet nurses, you'll meet doctors, and if you have a good reputation, you can find out the pathway, okay? But if you just masturbate to an idea, you never go forward. Good job. Free to be me. Do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. Free to be me. That's what we're talking about, okay? And never let a troll steal your confidence, why? Because they decided not to show up. Okay. So now their whole deal is how can I hurt this person to destroy his confidence so he cannot show up like me. And then we're both miserable together. Misery loves company. You keep showing up. Okay. You keep showing up. Let it burn in their soul. There will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth for every troll that's gotten every fake Gmail account deactivated. You can't make enough Gmail accounts, okay, for me to stop uploading. So let there be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Because what I can tell you is we going forward. Oh, yeah. Mm, right in your face. Let me take a hydration break. <laughs> they don't even realize it yet, man. They don't even realize it yet. That's all right. Let's continue to read. Uh, Jeremy Joy, good comment from free to be me. He's a positive person. He's been through the storm and he's got a good mindset. Tony, Sam, I'm considering a gig. I need an opinion. Okay. What you mean? I was planning on retiring this year, but after watching Gail's video, I decided to keep going. That's why I love Gail. That's why I support her channel and joined her group because she's honest. Okay. And I respect honest people who are trying to do their best. Okay. And I love that she says, I take full accountability because it's my decisions that brought me here. And her videos are pure. She's not perfect. None of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. But I support Gail in, in, her, in what, her venture. And I respect it. I understand it. Journey with Jordan. Only three days until my job starts. I'm praying for you, brother. Back to the W-2 full, full grind. Guess what? A W-2 worker on average makes more than a 1099 person. A 1099 person is an independent contractor. They're doing Uber, DoorDash, or anything else, and I've done it, and I think it's great. However, on average, someone on a W-2 will make more money and have more benefits and have more in retirement than a 1099 worker. So if you want to be a 1099 worker, do it on the side or do whatever you want. But the statistics are people who are W-2 uh, employer, uh, employee for an employer make more money. That's true. So build your career. Journey with Jordan, you're young. Build your career in the great industry, and then when you're in your 50s or, or whatever, you want to take it easy, you, could, you, can, you can downshift. It's easy to downshift when you're older. It's harder to upshift when you're older. Like, if you build your career, okay, in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, 
you can easily downshift in your 50s and 60s. However, if you put off that work and you wait, then when, if you put off that work and you wait, it's harder to upshift in your 50s, 60s, and 70s because you got less energy and you're less employable. That's the truth. Hold on one second. I got somebody here who put up their life. All right, guys, we keep showing up. Stay focused on the prize. I'm happy tonight. Uh, Lala, AK Zach. Hey, no, man. My uncle, Walt Riz, uh, Rosman, he's doing better. Good. This year, 2020, and we're going down for the six days or more to help him. Well, Zach, keep doing your thing. Because a negative person has one thing to, to break your focus. Why? Because they want attention. Anyone who's insecure wants your attention because no one else will talk to them. They're not at peace with themselves. Misery loves company. They actually want you to respond to them even if it's in a negative way. I remember this. I think it was Kevin Nash, the wrestler. He said, if I can't have your love, I at least want your hate. There are some trolls and negative people in life that even if, if they can't get your love, they want your hate. Why? Because they're insecure and they want your attention. This is truth. Okay. This is beyond the bullshit that they feed their therapist. This sees right through their soul. Okay. If they can't get your love, they want your hate. Oh, it's a powerful message, guys. Oh, yeah. Mm. What do you mean? The census is hiring now for office workers and field workers. Might be good temporary. It's a temporary side hustle. It's not a career. So... Just make a note of that, guys. I want you to focus on your career and do the side hustles on the side, but that's a good comment emoji. Cameron, got to get rid of the peach. Oh, we got to zoom in. All right. Let me do. I'm getting sweating up, man. Let me go back to my laptop uh, here now. Let's see. Um, he goes, got to get rid of the PT. I'm thinking about getting a renegade because of you, Sam, going to test drive it tomorrow. Well, guys, just remember, don't get it because of me. Okay, because I can make something look good because I either enjoy it or because because I'm on YouTube. Like when I'm on YouTube, it amplifies something just because I'm I'm showing it on a screen. Okay, and that's why advertisement is a big part of like you know entertainment. Okay, because like an entertainment uh, entertainer, which I'm technically considered on this platform, is no different than a regular person. But when they're on a screen and you may see them and you may like them, they make things look good. Like, so you want to buy things because you like them, you connect with them. The Renegade has been good to me. I would recommend it for a single person or empty nester. If you had kids, I wouldn't because I think it's just a little bit too small inside. However, you should only buy a car if it's below your means and it's something that fits your lifestyle. I appreciate that if I inspired you, but I, I want you to always remember that. What should you buy? Whatever is below your means... And whatever fits your lifestyle, okay? And try to keep your commitments on the lower level because everything in life changes. Good job. Journey with Jordan, $2,080 work hours in the year, okay? Journey, $230.77 per day for 60K. Well, guys, I like to do it in like just even increments. So like 50K, 25K a year, and 100K a year. I like to do it in that because it's just a cleaner slate. So, but you can adjust the numbers however you want based on your individual goals because we're all individuals. We have our own thumbprint. So, I'm giving you general guidelines like 2,000 calories per day are general guidelines. You have to adjust that for your individual circumstance. Good job. Enjoy your dream life, brother. All the Canadians are down here making that money. Got the universal health care. They're entrepreneurs. They're speaking French. I met some guy today. He was in a class B. He had a French accent from Canada. And me and him were chilling by the beach, brother. Shout out to you. Enjoy the dream life, bro. I'm always looking to make extra money. I ain't mad at that. When I'm down in Florida, four little deals in the house, I will drive your car while you're sleeping. Enjoy the dream life, man. You got a goal. You go after it. And what I can tell you, brother, is I got love for you. Four little deals waiting for you. Ah, uh, Moji Mimi is trying to go to Mars making 250K a year. You too much stock. I love for you. Benjamin, that's my positive aspiring nomad from Bakersville, California. I worked 60 hours a week uh, for 20 years. I'm proud of you, man. Good money, but it was still a waste of my life. It wasn't a waste of your life. It, I, I can understand that you recognize now it was out of balance, and I have been there myself. But this is what I would say. You are better off if you spent 20 years working 60 hours a week 
versus if you woke up at your age now and you only work 10 hours a week. I want you to think about this, Benjamin. At your age, if you woke up now and you only work 10 hours a week for 20 years, you'd be screwed, okay? <laughs> or 20 hours. So when you error, error on the side of you being better off at the end of life, okay? So now you are better off in life that you got more in retirement, you got more in social security, you got better work experience, and you got a mindset of, even if I got to work 40 hours a week now, it's a breeze. When you're 20, 30, and 40, that's the, your maximum potential. When you're 50 and 60, you want to downshift. So Benjamin, I understand your comment, and I agree with the balance of life, but you are in a better position than every lazy, apathetic person that only worked 10, 20 hours a week and thought they were getting by. So brother, congratulations. Jeremy Jordan? Moji meme shooting for the 961. <laughs> See, she's out of control. Don't, they ain't that like Moji meme. There's a lot more girls down here in South Florida that need that puss pampered. But it, it, even uh, Melania Trump ain't going to spend that much money per year. Come on, man. Don't he? Sam, those uh, Maryland crab cakes, they were, they were the imitation. I'm not going to lie to you. And Sam, me and my band have a set rate where, oh, you're in a union. Well, that's a blessing. You get a pension and better benefits. Yeah, look, the seafood in South Florida is actually not as good as seasonal seafood in the Northeast because I, maybe because the the water temperature is hot all year round. It's like it's like when the puss is, you know, hot all day round, get a yeast infection. So that crab cake had a yeast infection. Like it wasn't fresh. It's true. Blue chicken, what's up, man? Hundred dollars a year is bowling. Out. <laughs> Man, if you make it if you make anything in Ocala, Florida, man, you making a hundred dollars a year, man. You yo, you're living in a mansion, man. That's true. Good job, Boo Chicken. <laughs> I ain't mad at that, man. Good job, Boo Chicken. <laughs> Lala, okay, Zach, ain't no man. My uncle went to Rosman. He played Last Great Hope per year. He makes fifty thousand per year. He makes money, man. Still doing that. Well, love to you and love to your family, Zach. Uh, Tony, I was good to see you. I'm sorry I missed your comment. It wasn't there in time. Enjoy your dream life. I'm watching this nomad in the desert today. <laughs> He's getting a visitor from nowhere and gets stuck, uh, in the sand. What the F, guys? Just my opinion. If you look at videos from the desert versus visit videos from Florida, I don't know how you would rather be in the desert, but different strokes, different folks. Uh, camera, how do you opt in, opt out work? Well, right now, there's no UBI. Andrew Yang's running on it. He's basically saying he'll give everyone $1,000 per month, but you have to opt in. And you would only opt in if that equals, like, if you were making $800 a month in disability, and you were getting Medicare, and you were getting subsidized housing on his program, if you opt in, you're only going to get $1,000 per month, and you're not going to have health care. You're not, you know, so there's a lot to be said when it comes to, you, for UBI, to be a blanket fix, you would need to make $2,000 a month. But look, we can't keep pandering to the poor and destitute. We got to help them. But guys, it's the working middle class that the $1,000 per month would help. If you're not willing to work, guys, you're always going to be in survival mode. So if you want the government to help people that are not going to work and then let the working people suffer more, we're going to have a backward society. Okay. Look at some of the trolls online. They're not, they're horrible people. You want them having it better than the working people? Guys, you have to do what you can. $1,000 per month on UBI would help if you were working at Walmart and you were trying to get ahead. But if you're not willing to work at Walmart and you can, but you're playing a game, guys, you know, society shouldn't bend over backwards so you can screw society, okay? However, if you're trying to work and do the best you can, and I've seen people with half of uh, a deformed face limping with severe disabilities and they're still in the workforce. I give them a lot of credit because I don't know if I would be. So, you know, just remember that guys, you know, I mean, I believe in a just society, but a lot of people, I got people in my own family. They're on disability. They go to the gym every day. They date people on drugs. They're fucking unthankful. So guys, I'm not going to bend over backwards for people like that, man. <laughs> no way. Tony, Lila, I heard that I've been playing professionally for 13 years. So it's a grind, but I make enough to live. Well, if you're happy, and you're well, and you've always been positive to me, I'm happy for you, Tony. Just checking in, Sam. I appreciate that. Glad you're in good spirits. Well, Tony, I appreciate that, and I pray and I wish the best for you as well and your family and your loved ones, Tony. Thank you, and God bless you. Lila, AK Zach. Hey, no Matt. Love you, buddy. I love you too, man. You're a positive person. Tony, Sam, I work about five hours a gig. Hell, if I play a club, it's three at three and a half gig 
plus drinks and food are comped. That's not bad. That's a lot of like per diem, as they would say. Full sender is back. Well, good to have you back, Tony. Except in New York, they want you to pay the cheaper bastards. <laughs> I hear you, man. <laughs> Stay positive. Came on, came on, give me the money dial, the money sign emoji. Good to I appreciate that, brother. He's back. <laughs> Tony. Sam, buddy of mine has a show coming up, but I can't play ragtime. Should we play the gig? He says, buddy of mine has a show coming up, but I can't play ragtime. Should we play the gig? Well, this is what I would say. If you don't want to do something, say that clearly and respectfully, or else you're going to live a life of resentment. I remember the movie White Man Can't Jump. Basically, the guy was dating a hot chick. Uh, who was that? Rosie Perez or whatever. Uh, and basically, he had owed Wesley Snipes. And he had finally got to a position where he was good in life, but he ended up playing another game of basketball for money that he shouldn't have played only because he owed someone something. He should have just told Wesley Snipes, look, I don't want to play this game. Okay, And went off into the sunset with uh, Rosie Perez, I think it was. And even after he went into the game, which he shouldn't, and they lost, even Wesley Snipes told him, look, if you didn't want to do it, do it, you shouldn't have done it. So if you don't want to do something, say that you don't want to do something. Uh, you're better off to just basically give your friend $50. Okay. Well, I told the last person I helped move, I helped move, I helped a stripper move out of a third floor apartment. Last time I ever helped someone move. And I vowed this, that if I ever want to help someone move again, I will pay them money to help. I will, I will, I will join their Patreon account. Okay. If you want me to help you move and if I want to help you, I'm not going to help you move. I'll join your Patreon account. Why? I'd rather give you money to pay the movers than move your ass again. Never forget it. Carol, who is Gail? The video that you were talking about. Gail Arnold, she's a YouTuber. Uh, she was in here earlier. Good to see you, Carol. Lila, my lifestyle making YouTube money for Christmas light show. Six, I'm trying to get 50,000 views. <laughs> well, $1,000, a 1,000 views will get you $1. Journey with Jordan, if you're still in here, give me the math. If a thousand views will get you one dollar, how much will fifty thousand views get you? Guys, YouTube, there's money to be made in ad revenue, and you leverage that, but the big money is the platform. It's the super chats, it's the supplemental tips, it's the Patreon. AdSense plays a part, but look, I just broke down the math. I got three million views. I'm telling you from experience. And it's only over time. If you, after you have a bunch of different videos in your collection that people can go from video to video and then you build up a level of, you know, momentum, but $50. So, and you think making 50,000 views is easy guys. I could basically masturbate on a live feed. It's going to get 500 views. Huh, I'm going to make 50 cents. Okay. So if you, it's not like I told you, it's not easy to make 50,000 per year and it's not easy to get 50,000 views, okay? And I, I'm sweating, I'm pouring my heart out, I'm sharing my life, I'm dealing with psychopathic trolls, okay? So you'd be better off working for someone else as a W-2 worker rather than a 1099 YouTuber. However, like me, if you have a passion for it and you want to try to make it go at it, do it on the side. Why? Or else you'll be destitute. That's truth. Way of thing. New Haven, Connecticut. Shout out to New Haven, Connecticut. Is that my man, Goon Loso? Good to see you, Goon. Chronic Blast, what's up? Starting off 2020 with my first day in Florida. Well, congratulations and welcome to Florida. It's a great winter and escape. You damn right. Love to you and happy New Year's to you. Good to see you. Jay, what's up, man? Lila, hey, no man. Some people psychopaths. Oh, yeah. Crazy drivers, definitely. Uh, the highest car insurance rate is in Florida. Why? Because you got the most uninsured drivers. It's true. On the interstate going 80 miles an hour, yep. Uh, 90 miles, so some people get in accidents. It's true. You see it a lot down here. Per year, crazy drivers. It's true. Are reckless idiots. Jack, Jack, yeah. Look, Florida is one of the most reckless driving places in the country. Uh, so there's trade-offs, guys. You can be in Arizona where there's no car accidents, but there's also no water. You're in the middle of the desert looking at Bob Wells and Carol Ann RV, and that's what you're masturbating to. So, guys, do you want to pay a higher car insurance and be in the land of Latino MILFs, or do you want to be in the middle of the desert looking at Bob Wells' ass? To me, I'll take my chance in Florida. Tony? Yeah, that's the Rosie Perez. She wins at the Jeopardy at the end. Yes, 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 that's it. Jerry with Jordan broke down that math. Good job. Come on. Sam, what do you do if you get into a wreck? I think I would rent a hotel until I get a new car. Yes, uh, that would be an option. If you have an RV, I almost bought the Class B Karateo, 
when you have car insurance through, uh, you know, you actually get a hotel stay when your car gets wrecked. But yeah, if I, my car got in a wreck, I would stay in a hotel or Airbnb uh, until I could get it fixed. Now it depends on if you were hurt physically, then it, it may, you may need to extend it to a, a long-term Airbnb. But if you were in a short-term jam, then probably a, a short-term hotel stay would do it. If you got hurt long-term and you had no other place to go, you'd, you'd have to do like an Airbnb long-term rental until you can get your feet back under you. Tony? Yes, 1099 sucks, brother, but hey, that's life. Look, it sucks from the aspect of it's very unreliable and hard to build a sustainable income, but it's great where it gives you the, the goal and the freedom to be your own boss and to be your own owner, and that's a blessing. However, you have to mix that with reality. Okay, so... You know, I'm glad that there's 1099. I love it, but I also know the reality of life. So, you know, just try to balance uh, the two guys. Snow Panther, I would shout out to you, man. I was just going to ask that. I was always worried about what would you do if you couldn't afford another car. Well, one is you got to have car insurance. So hopefully you have collision and liability. Because if you're living in your car and you can't afford collision and liability, you're not working. Because there's no way you're living in your car and you can't have full car insurance. So you should have full coverage, uh comprehensive. So then if your car gets a uh, total, you should get a paycheck from the insurance company to reimburse you for the cost of that vehicle. And then you go buy another one. Uh, if you can't afford that again, you're, you're not working. I'm not saying you stone Panther, but these are my thoughts. So until you get a new car, yeah, you're in a hotel and you're going to Uber. And if you got hurt, then you were going to do an Airbnb long-term rental until you get healthy and you're going to Uber around, uh, and get DoorDash delivered to your Airbnb. Journey with Jordan. Also, nuclear fallout. Well, that's New Mexico. Total disaster. Good job. Come on. Downtown Chicago, people can drive. Yeah, well, I don't want to be in any state where there's a winter. I only want to be in Florida because it's endless summer. I love you. Tony. Uh, Snow, you could rent a car. It's kind of expensive, but it beats the bus. And Sam talk about reckless. Go on the beltway. Yes, and I actually have, like, I have also car rental insurance with my car uh, insurance coverage, meaning that if God forbid I total my car, my insurance company will pay up to $1,200 for a car rental until my car can get repaired or I replace it. So I also suggest you get that in your car insurance, car rental insurance as part of your comprehensive car insurance. If you're a nomad, it's a must because your car is your everything. Lila, hey nomad, I got a question. How much money per year on YouTube, 50,000 equals 60,000 average? I don't know, but what I can tell you is uh, it takes a lot of views to make $50,000 per year. I don't even know if like uh, Nomadic Fanatic makes that. That's a lot of money. So I don't I don't know the answer, Lala. Hey, Nomad, I got a question. How much money per year? Oh, yeah, I, I answered that. I love you. Cameron, thanks, Sam. Thank you. I got to stay for him. I'm not mad at that. Tony, Sam, the great thing is we as a band split everything. That way we don't screw each other. You know what I mean? Well, I give you credit. I'm an independent soul. I don't like to be tied or entangled with others. But if it works for you, you're a positive person. I'm glad it does. Journey. Lala, you would need to make 50 million views. Good job, Journey. Per year and make 50K. Thank you, man. I didn't know that. So obviously there's other factors in that based on your channel, your content. Your content and your channel is uh, bases some of your ad revenue because it bases who your audience is, your demographic. And that somewhat plays a, a part in your audience. And, you know, the advertisement, revenue, et cetera. So a lot of different levels to that. But overall, that's a good metric to go by. Tony, we ended up buying a rental car. It's nice and still under warranty. Just saying it's an option. Well, thank you for sharing. All right, guys. Thank you for everyone who left a comment. Thank you for all the positive people out there. You keep pushing forward. Live your best life. We shared some good things today. I appreciate it again if you click that thumbs up button, share the video. Have a peaceful night. Keep pushing forward. Balance your life with your time, your money, your dreams, your goals. And, you know, you give back uh, in a way that you can, okay? But self-care, self-care, self-care is priority number one. God bless.